here, 1505 Jefferson Street. Amen. The first Sunday of the month. Amen. We are having, amen, live in person services today. Amen. You might be viewing us on Facebook. Amen. On YouTube. Amen. But we have some saints that's right here. Amen. In about a year, over a year, we thank God. Amen. For keeping us. Amen. For being with us. At this time, before we go further, we're going to, amen, come with a word of prayer. Amen. We're going to ask our own evangelist, Charlotte Brown, to lead us in prayer. And then we're going to have Brother Lottie Baylor to come with our scripture reading. Hallelujah. God, your mighty and matchless name, Jesus. God, we just thank you. Hallelujah. God, we thank you. Hallelujah for being a mighty good God. Hallelujah. We thank you for being a merciful Savior. Hallelujah. God, we thank you for being a kind God. Hallelujah. God, we thank you, God. Hallelujah. Because there is none like you, God. Hallelujah. God, we thank you. Hallelujah. That we have entered into your house, God. Hallelujah. My God, what a privilege and what an honor it is. Hallelujah. To be standing in your house on this morning, hallelujah. God, we bless you, hallelujah. God, we give you glory, my God, hallelujah. God, we are humbled by you, hallelujah. Lord, we exalt you, hallelujah. Lord, we surrender to you, hallelujah. God, we thank you for saving us, hallelujah. We thank you for allowing us to go down in your name, hallelujah. We thank you for keeping us all moving out where we need to go, who we want to where we want to go. Uh, 313 4166. 
Amen. And then the code is one zero zero one zero six. Amen. So I, for you to keep those in mind. And then every Wednesday at six p.m., uh, uh, our pastor will be uh, having a Bible class. The pastor will be teaching Bible class at six p.m. every Wednesday night. That's from six to seven p.m. Then every Friday. Uh, our Zion Temple staff, man, uh, under the direction of our superintendent, uh, Brother Bill Eldridge, uh, will be teaching the Sunday school lesson every Friday night. Amen. We have a nice round of teachers, amen, capable of teaching our Sunday school lessons. So uh, join us. Uh, that's every Friday at 6 p.m. Amen. Videos of all of our services may be viewed on Facebook and YouTube, amen, and you can uh, view those right at the bottom of your screen. Amen, uh, the pastor wants to express his appreciation to the members of Zion Temple and friends of Zion Temple for your gracious support, amen, we thank God for you. Your assistance helps us in so many ways, amen. You can also demonstrate to the Lord Jesus your support for his kingdom as church. Amen. And then we have our giving. Amen. Uh, uh, you can see it on the bottom of the screen. We have uh, different avenues of giving. We have the, the Givelify app. Uh, we have the Cash app. And then Zelle. You can view those numbers right there at the bottom of your screen. Amen. So uh, give. Help us. Amen. To continue with this ministry. Uh, uh, and finally another method uh, uh, of giving. Like we say, uh, is, uh, with, with Zell. Uh, we'd like to leave you with this announcement before the uh, praise team comes back. Uh, our annual uh, virtual council, amen, is coming up. That's going to be March the 23rd through the 27th, amen. And if you have any questions about it, especially our members of Zion, you can contact Brother Bill Eldridge or Sister Pat Webb. Amen. They can give you more uh, information. We'd like to register for that virtual council. Amen. Again, those dates are March the 23rd through the 27th. That's our virtual council. So at this time, the praise team is getting ready to come back. Amen. With their final selection. And then after them, the next speaking voice you will be hearing will be that of our beloved pastor, Suffolk Bishop Tom Reynolds. Amen.
mercy towards us. Amen to all the members of Zion. Praise God. Amen to those of you that are joining in with us on Facebook and YouTube. Praise the Lord. Amen. You have come. We, you've allowed us, amen, to come into your story places. Amen. Your sounding places, your private places, your rooms, your bedrooms, maybe, your living rooms. Praise the Lord. Your cars or whatever. Amen. You are viewing us on your tablet, your telephone, however, however, however. Amen. We're grateful to God. Amen. For the privilege, amen, of serving the Lord. Amen. And coming to you with ministry as God has directed and inspired us today. I pray that you've been that you have enjoyed the praise team and all the worship and that has gone forth from this time forward. Praise the Lord. Amen. We pray that you've been blessed, been encouraged, and been informed. Praise God. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. We're going to go right into the word of the Lord. Amen. If you will, praise God. Uh, turn to the book of Ephesians. The book of Ephesians. Chapter number 2. Verses 19 through 22. Praise the Lord. Uh, I just want to reiterate, amen, the upcoming ABSA Council, the Apostolic Bible Student Association Council, coming up March, amen, the 23rd through the 27th, amen. I pray that you are excited about it, amen, and will yeah. make yourself, amen, uh, available, amen, to hear and participate, amen, with what, what God is doing for the state. Amen. The entire state will be tuning in. It will be an exciting time in the Lord. It was wonderful last year. We're looking for another good time in the Lord. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. All right. In Ephesians chapter number 2, verses uh, 19 through 22, the text reads as follows. Now, therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone in whom ye all, uh, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto a, a holy temple in the Lord. In whom ye also are built it together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Amen. We're going to go for Lord in prayer. As we pray, we ask you to, amen, remember the service today. Remember those, those of you that are with us today in the auditorium. Amen. To pray for those who are on Facebook, who are watching, and YouTube, who are watching. Pray, pray, pray. Amen. I, I was just impressed by a statistic that I found out, amen, about our live streaming. I found out that there were people in Rwanda watching us. Yeah. There were people in Iran watching us. There were people in India watching us. Ah, my God, my God. And I pray, I pray, I pray uh, that the blessing of God come down upon you. Uh, as we go forth into the world. Let's pray, let's pray, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, mighty God, we magnify you. We praise you, Father. Oh, for this time, for this moment, my God. Hallelujah. Ah, oh, living Lord, hallelujah. For the privilege, my God, to be in the kingdom of God for such a time as this. Ah, oh, God, we pray, my Lord, that you enable us and empower us, my God, and equip us, my God, to go forth in this word of God. That somebody, my God, might be healed. That somebody might be delivered. That somebody might be set free. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, we come against the powers of darkness right now. We come against the forces of the enemy right now. And by the authority of the name of Jesus right now, we bind your power. My God, my God, my God. Stretch out your hand now, Lord. And heal, oh Father. Deliver, God. Set free, Lord. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Lord.
Lord, encouraged by God. Bless that this ministry today will be a blessing of deliverance and salvation to everyone that hears and believes. Now bless this vessel. We may speak words of life to every hearer. And God will give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory for it all. Bless these mercies in Jesus' name. Thank God. Thank God. Amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We are inspired, uh, glory, by that first verse in our chosen text today. Amen. In Ephesians chapter number 2 and verse number 19. It says, Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. I'm going to be speaking to you from a subject simply entitled, Don't Forget Who You Are. Amen. Amen. Don't forget. Don't forget. Out of the midst of everything that's going on, Amen. don't forget who you are. For, does not matter, amen, who says what to you or what's going on. Or uh, Don't forget who you are. Come on, church. Hallelujah. Right. Our thoughts come out of the book of Ephesians. Amen. Ephesians is one of the uh, uh, the prison epistles, amen, written by the Apostle Paul while he was incarcerated in the city of Rome, amen. And there are those of you that know and have read your history and read your Bibles, you know that, uh, that Paul had appealed unto Caesar, amen, when he perceived that uh, the, the local court, amen, was in collusion with the Jews, you see, uh, they, they accused Paul of something. We're about to kill him. And he, Paul was arrested, praise God. And he's brought before King Agrippa, praise the Lord. And, uh, and, and they say, well, Paul, we don't find anything you're worthy that's worthy of death in you. Are you willing to go back to Jerusalem, amen, and, and finish up this business there? Paul says, no, I see what you're trying to do, praise the Lord. Uh, they were looking for an occasion to kill him, amen, when he went back to Jerusalem. But God, amen, gave Paul some wisdom says no brothers no no let take me to Caesar <laughs> I appeal to Caesar amen and so they had to amen pack him up praise the Lord and ship him off amen to Rome amen so he's in Rome praise the Lord amen and he has some some liberties but he's chained to a Roman uh, centurion amen he has some liberties amen he can come and go amen but he's got to have a Roman centurion with him amen and so praise the Lord he's writing this book writing the book of Ephesians. He written, wrote, wrote several other uh, books of the Bible, which we have mentioned to you before. Amen. But this is one of the prison epistles. And if you read, if you read the chapter, 18th chapter, the book of Acts, if you would discover how and under what circumstances the church of Ephesus was begun. Amen. Paul's purpose in writing to the saints in Ephesus was not to correct some bad behavior. Uh, it was not to settle some argument or to clear up, amen, uh, or and to cleanse the church, amen, from some false doctrine. And many of the books of the Bible, the New Testament, you will find that Paul is trying to correct something, amen. But in the book of Ephesians, he's not writing there because he's trying to correct anybody, amen. Uh, no, no, the writing of the book of, of this book appear, appears to be motivated simply by Paul's love for them. Praise wow. God. Amen. Simply because they, he, uh, they, they are on his mind. Yeah. Uh, simply because he has an affection for them. Yeah. Uh, as, as he writes to them, he also reminds himself uh, uh, of reasons to hope in God. Uh, uh, he writes to them as a means to, to jointly celebrate with them in the glorious privilege of baptism in Jesus Christ. Yeah. Praise God. Amen. 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 Uh, Ephesians chapter 1 and verse number 3 says, uh, Blessed be God. And Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us 
with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Uh, we can possibly see how this focus of thought uh, was a blessing to Paul while he was held prisoner in Rome. You see, he was physically incarcerated in Rome, praise God. But spiritually, he's in heavenly places in Christ. Did you catch that? Did you catch that? Praise God. Yeah, he, he's, he's got the chain on and he's he's in Rome, praise God. And uh, uh, but 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 uh, and that's a physical amen uh, thing that he's got to deal with. Amen. But spiritually, he is in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Amen. His physical liberty uh, is hindered by a chain, but his spirit, uh, his soul, and his mind uh, is free to give God thanks and praise. Oh, uh, my God. Look at it. Think about it. Think about it. Amen. Put yourself in his shoes. Uh, his current physical uh, circumstances uh, were unpleasant, uh, but his physical circumstances could not determine his spiritual reality. You see, brothers and sisters, we got to get to the place, praise God, that our physical circumstances and our physical situations don't move us to the place, amen, where we lose our peace and we lose our joy. We got to get to the place, praise God, even while we're chained up with something, even though we're incarcerated with something, uh, we've got Jesus on our side. Yeah. My God, by writing this book, uh, Paul shows us how to celebrate uh, Jesus even in a bad situation. Can you say amen? Uh, I think I think that right here there is already some help for us. Praise God. Right now already there's some help for us. God is already ministering to somebody. Praise God. Uh, because some of us right now, uh, right here and right now are in some bad situations. Y'all ain't got to say amen. You ain't got to fess up to it. Amen. You're sitting there looking all nice and pretty and everything, but nobody knows the trouble you've seen. Nobody knows what's going on behind the scenes. Nobody knows what you left at home to get here today, praise God. But oh my God. God, Amen. We can uh, we can get some joy and we can get some instruction out of what Paul is going through. Praise God. Uh, and physically, praise God. We have some unpleasantness to work out. Uh, but I won't let my unpleasant circumstances uh, weigh my spirit down. I refuse to be weighed down. I refuse to move into depression. I refuse to lose hope because when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for me my soul will cry out hallelujah I'm going to give God praise anyhow regardless to what I'm going through have I got a witness in the house anywhere yes my God in order in order in order to reap the benefit of our text, we have to remind ourselves of some things in the first chapter of Ephesians. So you're going to hear me referring back to the first chapter of Ephesians to understand where we are in the second chapter. Praise God. Ephesians was located in Asia Minor, mostly a mostly Gentile city that had a moderate population of Jews. Amen. The church there, praise God, was mostly Gentile. And Paul says much that assures these Gentile believers of their newfound identity. Uh, there's a lot, amen, up in this book of Ephesians, amen, that encourages strange folk, amen, encourages, amen, the, the immigrants, that encourages, amen, those who have been marginalized by society. There's much in the book, amen, that Paul speaks to that can help people 
people who feeling like uh, second class citizens uh, feeling like amen they are being marginalized because of this thing that thing or the other thing uh, uh, man, anybody here know what I'm talking about uh, yeah we struggle we struggling in this country right now uh, we going through some stuff in this country right now this country right now has got to has been forcibly forced to face uh, amen some policies and procedures uh, and a history uh, of marginalizing uh, a group of people uh, based on their look uh, on their race their creed their color uh, uh, so this is a relevant topic amen I want the people of God amen to glean from this lesson uh, something that God is telling you uh, that you can do in spite of how folk think about you come on say say amen somebody Amen. And so, praise God, in the first chapter, uh, Paul reminds them mm, that they were chosen in Christ uh, before the foundation of the world. Praise God. Uh, this reassures them that no present day detractor uh, or no present day critic uh, has any foundation for taking away anything uh, that has been given to them by Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, it did not matter where they came from. Uh, it did not matter, amen, what their background was. Uh, amen. They were chosen by God. Uh, Paul is trying to get it across to them. Uh, there would be no need to feel like second class citizens uh, to the Jews uh, because the same God uh, that spoke to the forefathers of the Jews uh, was the same God uh, that moved upon them. Uh, and fill them with the Holy Ghost. Uh, praise God. Uh, Paul does a lot to emphasize uh, who we are uh, by reminding us of our spiritual location. Uh, five times in the first chapter, Paul tells him uh, that they are in Christ. Uh, amen. Five times in the first chapter. Uh, two more times in the second chapter. Uh, and two more times in the third chapter. Uh, Paul reminds him that they are in Christ. Uh, amen. In the verse of our, of our text, uh, uh, verses of our text, verses 19 through 22, uh, Paul reveals six things uh, about who we are uh, and where we are. Uh, don't forget, amen, who you are. Come on, somebody. In verse number 19, praise God, uh, Paul reminds them that they are a new nation. Uh, and, and, and in the same verse of 19, uh, God reminds them that they are God's family. In uh, verse number 20, Paul tells them uh, that they are God's building. In uh, verse number 22, uh, amen, Paul tells them that they are a growing organism. They're not dead, uh, but they are alive. In uh, verse number... 22, he reminds them uh, that this thing called church uh, is a worldwide temple. Uh, and in that same, in the next verse, 22, uh, he reminds him that they are also a local assembly. Uh, amen. So there's six things that remind us uh, of who we are uh, and where we are. Because uh, I don't want you to forget uh, who you are in Christ. Uh, praise God. I want to encourage you uh, from the point I can't cover all of them today. Uh, that's too much information. Praise God. Uh, let me take out one of those amen situations. Uh, amen. Point number one. Uh, the church as a new nation. Ephesians chapter number 2 and verse number 19. Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. <laughs> You see, some people, praise God, uh, amen, are heartbroken uh, and disappointed uh, over what the previous presidential administration had done. Uh, I'm talking about us in a natural situation. Uh, amen. I want you to know that Paul is, is emphasizing the new nation. Uh, the church say the new nation. 
yeah, the new nation, praise God. Uh, he's emphasizing the new nation. Uh, but we've got a nation that we live in right now, praise God. Uh, and there's some things, praise God, that some people are heartbroken and disappointed over uh, what the previous administration has done. Uh, there are some people who are heartbroken uh, over what this present administration uh, has passed into law. Uh, I was looking at something on, amen, on Facebook. Uh, Amen. Someone was, amen, recounting, praise the Lord, uh, uh, this new law and the equality law, uh, amen, that has been passed by this government, uh, amen, and the, the church that was recounting it, uh, the folks were breaking down in tears, uh, uh, they were moaning and groaning uh, about what this nation had done. Uh, I want to tell you something, praise God, uh, amen, this country ain't saved. You may not agree with me, but I am under no, amen, no delusion that this is a Christian nation. No, no. If they were a Christian nation, this Bible would be the rule book by which they do everything. And everybody in leadership will be baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost and live in a holy lifestyle. Don't you tell me. So I'm not going to get all heartbroken over what this world decides to do and these laws that they put into place and what they give people permission to do. I'm not broken hearted. I'm not breaking down in tears over what they pass in Washington. I want to redirect our loyalty. I want to redirect our allegiance to the new nation of God which is called the church. I want to redirect our passionate nationalism. Let me say that again. Our passionate nationalism. There's some religious folk who are passionately national in their fervency. And they're passionately national about the country of the USA. But I want to redirect your focus to become passionately national about the new nation called the nation of Jesus Christ. I want to redirect uh, our passion nationalism uh, to the new nation God has birthed uh, into the world. Uh, I want to repair uh, the broken heartedness uh, of some who have experienced uh, uh, because of disappointment uh, with the physical nation uh, that we are temporarily uh, living in. Y'all didn't catch it. Y'all didn't catch that. Yeah, y'all didn't catch that. Uh, some are some are falling out uh, because of what's going on. I'm not falling out because I know I'm only here temporarily. Praise be to God. I'm only I'm only walking through here. I'm a sojourner. I'm a traveler. I'm only traveling through here for just a little while because one of these days, my Lord and my Savior should let him He shall descend from heaven with a shout. Here come my king. Here come my president. Here comes my leader. He shall descend from heaven with a shout. And the voice of the archangel. The dead in Christ will rise first. And we which are alive and remain shall be caught up. I want to redirect your fervor. I want to redirect your zeal. I want to redirect, amen, your nationalism. There is a new nation that God has created. There is a new nation where God dwells in the midst of them. There is a new kingdom that we all can be a member of. It's called the church of the living God. It's called the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. If you're a member, shout I'm a member of the kingdom. 
see, you see, Jesus didn't come into the world to validate any natural nation or kingdom. Did you hear that? Jesus did not come into the world to validate any natural nation or kingdom. Jesus didn't come into the world to support any political system or any political ideology. Jesus did not come into the world to tell us to be Republican or Democrat. Jesus came into the world to build his church. On this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Yes, Jesus came into the world to gather together his followers. Jesus said, my sheep, they hear my voice, and a stranger they will not follow. Jesus came into the world to seek and to save that which was lost. I want to tell somebody that's listening to me on Facebook, on YouTube, that that's here today in this church. Don't forget who you are. Come on to somebody and say amen. Now our text says in the 19th verse, I'm almost through. Uh, now therefore, you are more, you are no more strangers. You are no more foreigners, but you are fellow citizens with the saints. Let the church say fellow citizens. Yeah. Now a citizen is defined as a native or naturalized member of a state or a nation. A citizen owes allegiance to its government and is entitled to its protection. That's the blessing. That's the definition of a citizen. As citizens of the nation of God. Am I talking to some? Am I talking to members out here today? Am I talking to some citizens here today? There are some born again baptized believers. Am I talking to some citizens here today? Am I talking to the nation of God? Let me tell you something. We owe our nation our allegiance. Yes, we do. Because a citizen owes allegiance to the government of his nation. I'm a citizen and I owe allegiance. Amen to the nation of God, to the church of Jesus Christ. Amen. We used to, used to I used to when I was a young man. There will be a time in grade school. They will have us stand up and do the pledge of allegiance. Amen. There will be a flag in the classroom. We all, like little soldiers, would stand up, put our hands over our heart, and we would pledge allegiance to the flag. Hallelujah. But brothers and sisters, we need to change who we pledge allegiance to. Christians, as saints, as born again believers, as citizens of the kingdom of God, we ought to pledge allegiance to the nation of God. Can I get y'all to listen to the pledge? I pledge allegiance to Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, and to his gospel, and to his church, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, Father of all, who is above all, through all, and in us all. I pledge allegiance to Jesus Christ. Have I got any fellow citizens out here? Shout the Lord! My God, as a, as a, as a little fella, Nobody, nobody explained to me why I should be pledging the allegiance. Hallelujah. But I began to learn some things after I got a little older. Amen. I started learning some things. I learned some history. And I started to have some problems about pledging the... Oh, my God. Uh, should I go there? Oh, hallelujah. 
I started having some problems about pledging allegiance to a country amen, that enslaved my grandparents. I started having problems about pledging allegiance to a country that would justify Jim Crow laws. I started having problems pledging allegiance to a country that tried to stop me from voting. I had problems. But my God, let me tell you something. Ah, hallelujah. After, 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 I found out what this country was about. I began to get discouraged. But one day, I heard somebody preaching about the gospel of Jesus Christ. One day, I heard somebody telling me about a better God, a better nation, a good church. I heard somebody telling me about a higher hope, a better way. I heard the gospel of Jesus Christ, and I gave my allegiance. I gave my loyalty. I said, yes, Lord. allegiance pastor why pledge allegiance amen a citizen a citizen amen owes allegiance to its government and is entitled to its protection why pledge allegiance to Jesus Christ and his church because I owe Somebody say, I owe. Look at God and say, Lord, I owe you. I owe him my life. I said, I owe him my life. But I was dead in sin. I was alienated from the Lord. I was in the world without God and without hope. I was in the world fulfilling the lust of my flesh and of my mind. I was a child of the devil. I was a child of darkness and my destination was the flames of hell. But God, but God, I said but God, who is rich in mercy for his great love by which he loved me. He picked me up out of the world of sin. He brought me into the kingdom of God. I was baptized in Jesus' name. I was filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking other tongues as the Spirit of God gave utterance. Was brought into the kingdom. Why? Why should I pledge my allegiance? Because I owe. Let your church say I owe. Say it again. I owe. For if any man, I say I owe him my life. For if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away, and behold, all things they become new. Hallelujah. Those old things I used to practice, and they were shortening my existence. I had habits that I could not break. I had addictions that I could not shake. I was incarcerated. I was captivated. I was bound and bewildered. Oh, but here come Jesus, the chain breaker. Here come Jesus, the yoke destroyer. Here come Jesus, that set me free. He broke every chain. He loosed every fetter. Opened up my jail cell. And now I'm free. I was sinking deep in sin. From the peaceful shore. Very deeply.
pledge allegiance is because as a citizen, I am entitled to the protection of the government. <laughs> Hallelujah! I am entitled to the protection of Jesus! With, with a natural nation have not been all that good. You can't put your trust in this natural nation. There's too much stuff going on. Too many tricks. Too many shenanigans. Too much, too much. Hallelujah. Oh, but the kingdom of God. Our trust is in a king who can't lie. But he said, I will be with you. He can't lie. When he says, Amen, though you walk through the water, it will not overflow you. When you pass through the fire, it shall not burn you. You won't be consumed. I am entitled. I'm entitled to the protection of this kingdom called the kingdom of God, the church, and his leader. So I pledge allegiance to him. I don't get all thrown out of shape, out of whack over what this worldly system does. Listen to me. They can't help but to do worldly stuff because they're worldly. They're lost. They're not being led by the Spirit of God. get bit, bit out of shape. But we have a different king. And we walk by higher laws. Oh yes we do. Hallelujah. No matter what this government permits these people to do in this land, I have a higher law that governs my actions. Governs my ways. I have a higher purpose. I have, amen, better protection. You see, God, God don't need cruise missiles. God don't need atomic bombs. You can just speak the word.
I said, that's the rule I obey. I belong to a heavenly kingdom. I walk by a higher purpose. I have better hope. I've got a better reward waiting for me. Praise be to God. I want to encourage you. Amen. You're going to be witnessing a lot of things. And those of you that are the sound of my voice that are not saved, you're going to hear a whole lot of things that are that may appeal to your flesh from this government and from the environment. Praise God. But there's another, there's another kingdom. Amen. That is living, that is here among these people of this world. Amen. That you belong to. And I guarantee you, you won't be disappointed. Amen. You won't be disappointed. I want to invite you to take this time to invite you into that kingdom. Jesus Christ sent his disciples into the world. I told them, when you go, preach. Preach repentance and remission of sins in his name among all nations. He that believeth is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. These are not my words. These are the words of Jesus Christ. And I want to say and make an offer to those of you that are listening to me on Facebook and YouTube. If you're not saved, you can be saved. You can give your life to Jesus Christ. Amen. You were born in the world in sin. And that sin can only be removed by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And you can only live acceptably in his sight by being filled with the power of his Holy Spirit and being led of the Spirit of God. But the Bible says they that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. You can have this great sonship. You can have this great citizenship and have a brand new identity by being born again. If you're listening to me right now and God has spoken to your hearts, get in contact with us. Amen. We're here at 1525 Jefferson Street, Gary, Indiana. Amen. Give us a call. I believe the phone number is right there on the screen. Amen. Call that number. Amen. Leave a message. We, someone will get back to you expeditiously if you have a desire to give your life to Jesus Christ. Amen. Come on. Allow yourself. Amen. That's this chance to know Jesus for yourself. Amen. If you have a prayer request, you may call us up. We'll get back with you. We'll pray for you and ask God to help you to make, amen, a choice to be a member of this kingdom, a member of the church of Jesus Christ. God bless you. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. God is inviting you to say yes to him. Yes. Not, ju not just a, a vocal yes, but a heart convicted yes. A yes that comes from, amen, the, the, the weighing of the reasons of your soul. You come to the conclusion that the best thing for you is to give your life to Jesus. I want to invite you to says, tell him yes. And while you're there, before you make the call, tell him yes right now. Right where you sit, right now, right now. Because Jesus is listening right now. Right now, come on. Church, let's, tell, let's help them say yes. Let's help them. Come on, somebody. Say yes. Lord, Lord, yes, to your will, to your way, I say yes, Lord, come on, just say, I will trust you.